Hello, Washington and Lee High School Juniors. We are happy that you joined us today for Just for Juniors. The guidance department is excited to work with you as you plan for life after high school. This is a program that has been offered by the guidance department for over six years. My first piece of advice is don't stress. We are here to help. We are going to discuss four great pathways to your future success. Do you want to work after graduation? Do you already have a job? Working is one of the great options. How about the military? Do you have a family member or friend in the military? Ms. Eddings will discuss different branches of the military and why that might be the great option for you. Do you take classes at the Northern Neck Technical Center? Are you interested in trade or apprenticeships? Ms. Jackson, your school counselor, will discuss these great options. Do you want to earn your associate's degree at one of many community colleges in Virginia? Mr. Waddy, your high school navigator, will talk to you about the Virginia Community College system and the guaranteed admissions options with four-year colleges and universities. Community college is a great option. Are you ready to pursue your bachelor's degree at a four-year college or university? Ms. Izarita, your college advisor, will discuss that great option. As I hope you all heard, all of these options are great. You have to choose the productive path that works for you. No matter which pathway you choose, we, along with the administration, teachers, staff, and especially your families, are here to support you through the process. Before we go into more details about the four pathways, I want to tell you some things you might need. Your transcript will be needed if you plan to apply to post-secondary education programs. There is a link to request transcripts through an online service called Parchment. Those requests are sent to me, and then I send you a transcript to the post-secondary program that you choose. Resumes and self-assessments are a snapshot of the accomplishments in and outside of school. The importance of academic record and extracurricular activities. Your academic record is your transcript. Your transcript lists all of the courses that you took in high school and in the middle school where you received high school credit. Extracurricular activities are important. You do not need to be an athlete. This includes clubs, volunteering, and more. Keep track of the programs and hours of participation. Your sponsor could be one of your recommenders. Major Clarity is an online platform to assist in researching work, college, and the military. It guides you through different career paths based on your interests. Letters of recommendations are sometimes required by colleges, scholarship programs, and for employment. If you need a letter of recommendation, please give your recommender advance notice, preferably two weeks. Recommenders can be club sponsors, a teacher, a school counselor, or anyone who knows you well. On this next slide, we're going to look at a transcript. Earlier, it includes the courses, grades, GPA, and the number of credits earned. It is important that you try your best in every class that you take because it will be on your high school transcript. We will make all of the resources and links available online. If you have questions, please feel free to contact us. Now, I would like to introduce Ms. Eddings, school counselor. Hi, I'm Ms. Eddings, and I'm going to talk to you about the workforce. There are many jobs students can go into immediately following high school. Some of you may recognize these logos of various places of employment in our area. If your plan is to enter the workforce immediately following high school, our goal is to help you not only find the job you want, but to also keep it. Employees in the state of Virginia have identified these workplace readiness skills that they think is important for students coming into the workplace from high school. These include personal qualities and abilities such as creativity, problem solving, initiative, integrity, and work ethic. Interpersonal skills such as conflict resolution, customer service, listening and speaking, respect for diversity and teamwork. And then there's a host of professional competencies they look for. These include big picture thinking, career and life management, continuous learning and adaptability, efficiency, productivity, workplace sa safety, math skills, and reading and writing. 
the entire list can be found at the link below. So in preparation for the workforce, we recommend that you take advantage of the following. Research your career using a tool such as Major Clarity. That is very helpful to match you with a career that best suits your personality and skills, your interests. We also have a high school navigator that comes into the building from RCC and he can be very helpful in helping you navigate a career choice and plan for life after high school. We also have a host of CTE courses that offer so much information and knowledge that will be helpful for the workforce um, to prepare you for the workforce. So please take advantage of our CTE courses. Marketing Co-op is an op another opportunity. It is a CTE course, but it's where you actually go to work and earn a high school credit for that. And there's nothing like um, hands-on training to help you prepare for the workforce by working in the workforce. And finally, we do strongly recommend that you finish strong. That means stay on top of your grades and academics um, your attendance is important and because oftentimes employers will reach out to us to ask for transcripts and or you may need a letter of recommendation. So please keep that in mind going into your senior year in high school. Also, if you're interested in the armed forces um, in working after high school, the armed forces is an excellent opportunity and we have several different branches of the military available. They include the Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, Coast Guard, and the USSL, which is a relatively new branch of the Armed Forces. We strongly recommend that you contact a recruiter. Recruiters often come into the building and meet with students during their lunch. So keep that in mind if you're interested in the military be looking for them during your lunch your senior year um, and possibly you may need to reach out to a recruiter and we can help you with that also be mindful of their eligibility requirements so military is not one a job that you can just walk into they have their own list of requirements and they need to make sure that you are uh, fit for that particular branch of the military one of the military requirements is that you take the ASVAB test, which is a battery of tests that will match you with a career, but it also has um, its use for your interest into the military. So you have to um, reach a certain score for each of the various branches of the military to be able to get into the military. And then it also um, helps determine what jobs you qualify for. So keep that in mind as, as a, an eligibility requirement is your score on the ASVAB test. Military jobs um, vary. They have so many different jobs in the military. Ideally, um, a job that you would want in the military is one that would transfer to life outside of the military. So if you decide you're going to only do a few years, you want a job that when you walk out away from the military, you can walk right into another job. So, but they have so many jobs that they have doctors, nursing, mechanics, truck drivers. So oftentimes the same jobs you see in the outside sector, they have those in the military as well. Some of the um, benefits include the pay, um, travel, health benefits, so there's many benefits that are associated with the military. And then we have the ROTC program. That's not offered here at our high school, but oftentimes high schools do offer the ROTC program. Um, and colleges do as well, so if you're thinking about the military after college, you may want to enroll in an ROTC program while in college to help you prepare for the military. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ms. Jackson and I am one of the school counselors here at Washington and Lee and I'm just going to share some information. 
about technical schools and apprenticeships and what you can do during your senior year if you're interested in either of these pathways. So technical schools provide classes and training for a particular career or trade and then apprenticeships provide an opportunity to gain on the job training and industry credentials while you're getting paid. Um, so there's a few things you can do during your senior year to put you on a pathway to either going to a technical school or getting an apprenticeship. Um, CTE courses are classes that you can take at Washington and Lee that um, may provide you with um, credentials in a certain field, um, but they'll definitely give you um, experience and make you a little bit more competitive if you're um, applying to tech school or applying for an apprenticeship. Um, the Northern Neck Tech Center provides scholarships for their tech center students sometimes for trade schools. And then um, another avenue you could go is through RCC. Um, Rappahannock Community College has um, a few different trade programs, such as their welding program or their CDL program, and there's a, a few others that um, are good opportunities to get experience in a field and credentials in a field. So is technical school or an apprenticeship a good fit for me? Um, so technical schools and apprenticeships can be an excellent fit for students who want to go into a specific field, such as electricity or horticulture. Now, if you are one of the students who may be unsure about what you want to do after graduation, that is fine. Um, but you might want to do a little bit more research before applying to a technical school or applying to an apprenticeship just because their training is so specific to a certain field. Um, you may not get um, credentials for other fields or the training to do a little bit more exploring. Um, so typically there's a few requirements when applying for a technical school or an apprenticeship. Um, you need a high school diploma or equivalent. Typically, um, they do prefer a high school diploma though. You need strong worth ethic, ability to work well with others, strong written and verbal communication skills, the ability to learn quickly, and the ability to work safely with knowledge and safety rules. So you need to be able to follow the rules and stay safe. Um, believe it or not, y'all are already practicing these um, skills right now. So doing well here at Washington and Lee um, is a great way to practice those skills and show that you have the skills that are required to um, apply to technical school or to be a good apprenticeship candidate. So how do you find a technical school? Um, online research is a, your best bet. That's my um, recommendation for everyone when looking for schools, whether it's a college or a technical school, do your research. Um, a good platform to research on is called Major Clarity. The link to that is on this slide. Um, also, we um, typically have a college fair at WNL in the fall. Um, tech schools will come to that and send rep representatives to that. You'll also have an opportunity during Virginia College Application Week to work with your counselor and research tech schools and um, apply to them. And then if you are a Northern Neck Tech Center student, um, the tech the Tech Center brings in representatives from different fields to talk to students that are in the program for those fields or that connect with that field. So that's a good opportunity to um, 
learn a little bit more about technical schools there. And then um, how do you find an apprenticeship? Um, once again, online research, you can use um, apprenticeship.gov is a great resource for finding an apprenticeship. Um, and then a lot of the times we will have um, the apprentice school come to the college fair that we hold in the fall usually. Um, and they are a good resource for helping find an apprenticeship as well. And then we always suggest networking with local employers. Um, we typically hold a spring career fair at WNL, and when it's in person, local employers will come, and we encourage all of our students to connect with as many employers as possible and show interest in apprenticeships because even if that particular person isn't hiring for an apprenticeship, if you impress them, they may know someone else in their field who is um, accepting applications for apprenticeship and they might be able to connect you with them. So networking is really important for finding an apprenticeship. Um, so that's all I have about technical schools and apprenticeships. Um, our next information is going to be on two-year colleges, and you're going to hear from our high school navigator from RCC about those. Thanks. Hello, my name is Jawan Wadi. I'm the career coach for Washington Lee High School. Today I'm presenting on the two-year college pathway. First off is dual enrollment. Dual enrollment programs are voluntary and enable students to take community college courses while still enrolled in high school and provide college level opportunities not otherwise available. Dual enrollment courses allow qualified high school juniors and seniors to enroll in college courses during the day and receive both high school and college credit. Students who have previously taken dual enrollment classes do not need to reapply for admission to the institution in which their dual credits come from. You might ask, what are the benefits of dual enrollment? According to the Community College Research Center, dual students have a higher likelihood of graduating from high school, enrolling in college right after high school graduation, pursuing a bachelor's degree, as well as persisting to completion of their degree or certificate program. Next is the Virginia placement test. The VPT has two components, English and mathematics. It is required before beginning classes. The VPT will assess your ability in math, reading, and writing. The VPT is a comprehensive test designed to place students in appropriate courses to ensure success. Next is transferring credits. Dual courses are offered as a pathway into colleges or careers. Some classes are designed for transfer to a four-year institution, filling freshman or lower level course requirements. Other dual courses are not intended to transfer, but are requirement, requirements for career or occupational certification or applied science degrees. Next to go along with transferring is the guaranteed admission agreements. The Virginia Community College systems offer students more than just an opportunity to earn a degree or certificate. It also provides a pathway to some of the best four-year institutions in the state. Some of these institutions include Christopher Newport, College of William and Mary, George Mason, James Madison, University of Virginia, and Virginia Tech. Next, I'm gonna explain about how you do that transfer. Most community colleges offer a transfer program leading to the Associate of Arts and Science degree. This program is designed for students who plan to complete their freshman and sophomore year of college work at the community college level, then transfer to a four-year institution to complete the junior and senior levels. Students pursuing the Associate of Arts and Sciences transfer degree and related specializations are candidates to transfer to a four-year college and university upon completion. 
Students completing Associate of Applied Science degrees that lead to employment may be eligible to transfer to degree completion programs offered by four-year institutions through special agreements. Next, as I mentioned before, is the Virginia Community College Systems, or the VCCS. The VCCS is comprised of 23 different community colleges in the state of Virginia, and this means that there is a standard of offerings at all of these institutions, which include the following, transfer programs, applied science degrees, career studies degrees, and certificate programs. Next is locality and financial savings. Within the 23 community colleges across the state, it covers most geographic locations. This enables many students to live closer to home. This can alleviate some of the stress that comes with moving far, as well as taking away some of the financial burden. As an example, Rappahannock right Community College is the closest community college in this region with two main campuses, Glens and Warsaw. Next, when speaking about money, one of the favorite things to talk about is scholarships. Many, but not all of the VCCS scholarships are need-based. Even if you don't think you will qualify for a need-based scholarship, it is highly recommended that you complete the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, to help match you with the scholarships that you will be eligible for. Ms. Isarita will talk a little bit more about those um, processes, especially for the FAFSA. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Nicole Isarita and I am the college advisor here at WNL. So I'm going to be talking about four-year colleges and what you can do to prepare. So before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about the Opportunities Guide. So the Opportunities Guide is a um, college workbook that is released each year. And it tells you just about everything that you need to know about the college application process. It's a wonderful resource. So I definitely suggest uh, for students and families to take advantage of this um, throughout their senior and junior year. So the ways that you can access it are first, we have an online PDF version of it that we will share with you all um, in a research resource guide uh, when the, this presentation gets released. The other way that you can access this is by obtaining a hard copy. And we do have hard copies available in the counseling department. So you can see either your school counselor or Mrs. Payne if you'd like this um, in a hard copy. Next, so let's get started. We'll talk about building your college list first. So this is a map of all of the four-year colleges in Virginia. As you can see, there's a ton of schools to choose from. So how, how do you narrow down this list? So when you're building your college list, we do suggest that students apply to around three or five schools and to make their college list evenly distributed among safety, match, and reach schools. So a safety school is when the GPA that you have far exceeds the range that the school is asking for. A match is when your GPA is right about average for what the school is expecting, and then a reach school is when your GPA might be on the tail end of that range or if it falls a little bit below what the school is asking for. For exact GPA and SAT ranges for Virginia colleges, you can take a look at Opportunities Book page 29 and 30 and start creating your college list based off of the list provided there. So next, we'll talk a little bit about personal statements. So like it says on the slide, there's really no right or wrong way to write a personal statement. However, schools do look for a few things. So they want to see what kind of achievements uh, you've been able to obtain that aren't reflected in your transcript or in the list of extracurricular activities that you provide on your application. Another thing that students focus on are events that have shaped them in, in some kind of impactful way. Overall, the personal statement is just the opportunity for you to shine and show admissions offices who you really are and what you're about. So there is something called the Common Application Essay. So for those who don't know, the Common Application is a platform where you can apply to several schools at one time. It's really great because all of the requirements for each of your college applications are in the same place. It's a really great way to keep yourself organized and it streamlines, streamlines the process for you because everything is right in, in one account. So 
each year they release the common application prompts. This is what they're asking for in this next application cycle. And at this time, I do suggest that students and families pause for a moment, read over these common app prompts or common app essay prompts and pick one or two that really resonate with you and it's something that you think you might be able to write about. Draft both of the prompts and then pick from the stronger prompt. Since this is such an important piece of your application, I do suggest that you get a second set of eyes on this essay when you're close to finalizing it. You can bring it to your college advisor, and I know the English teachers are also happy to read over these essays as well. Just make sure that you're double checking and proofreading this before you send it off. So next, we'll talk a little bit about the SAT versus the ACT and the differences between the two exams. The SAT tests reading and math. It's Oh, it tests critical thinking and it's content text heavy. It's offered at w &L and a bunch of other Northern Next schools. So this is definitely widely available to students in this peninsula. On the other hand, we have the ACT, which tests reading, writing, math, and science. So if you're really good at math and science, we do suggest that you try this out because you might score more competitively on this exam because of your math and science skills. This test is also content heavy, so they're testing what you actually do know. And then it is less offered here in the Northern Neck. The only testing site that we've had in the past is RCC. So depending on what RCC's reopening plan is, you might have to test outside of the Northern Neck. I do suggest checking either Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg area, or Mechanicsville, Richmond area. And if you do need help signing up for this exam or finding a testing center, please see your college advisor. So here are the SAT administration dates for the fall. We suggest that students take either test at least twice, just so the first time you can try it out and then the second time you can try and improve your score. If you haven't taken an SAT the spring of your junior year, we suggest you plan to take twice in the fall. So here are the dates listed. To take the test with the essay is around $60 and to take it without is 46. A lot of Virginia schools don't require the essay for either of these exams. So just check to see what the requirements are for each of the schools that you're applying to, just so that you don't have to um, take the essay if it's, if it's not required of you. Also, make sure that you are checking the registration fees for both of these exams, because if you don't register on time, there will be an additional late fee slapped onto your, um, your total. Lastly, for the SAT specifically, if you qualify for free or reduced lunch, you will be eligible for a fee waiver that gets you two free exams. So if you, if that applies to you, see your college advisor or school counselor when you decide to register and they can set you up with a fee waiver. So here we have the ACT um, test dates for the fall of this year. The price points are very similar as the SAT. Again, just make sure that you're checking those registration deadlines so you don't have to pay any additional fees. And for the ACT, if you qualify for free or reduced lunch, you can get two separate fee waivers for this exam, each getting you a free test. So each time that you go and sign up for the ACT, make sure that you see either your college advisor or school counselor to help you register so you don't have to pay out of pocket. So next, let's talk a little bit about keeping track of your student accounts. So when you go through the application process, there are a few accounts that you have to keep track of. So you'll have your Common App account, you'll have your SAT or ACT account, you'll have your two FAFSA IDs for both the parent and student, and then you might have another account here or there. So it's really important that you get all these usernames and passwords straight. So make sure that you write it in your agenda or keep a note saved on your phone just so that you can easily access these passwords. Lastly, I'll talk a little bit about the FAFSA. So the FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And this is the financial aid application that you need to complete at, during your senior year to be eligible for federal, state, and institutional aid. So if you're interested in getting help paying for college, this is definitely the way to do so. And it's the only way that you can be put into the running for, like I said, federal, state, and institutional aid. What the FAFSA does is it takes your tax information, your income, your assets, and all the other types of benefits that you might get 
um, as a household and it uh, puts it through a calculation that then tells schools, the government and the state how much aid that you're going to need. So October 1st of your senior year is when you wanna start filing this application. Each year we do have FAFSA night in the fall, at least once, and then maybe once in the spring. It's an opportunity where you can learn a little bit more about the FAFSA and also get one-on-one -on -one personalized assistance on your application so that you can get it submitted early. Like I said, um, you will have help with this process. So please reach out to anyone in the counseling department if you have additional questions. There's also really great information on the opportunities book about FAFSA and financial aid. So if you're interested in doing additional research ahead of senior year, that's definitely a great resource. So again, lean on us. We're here to help you every step of the way and best of luck in the next year.